All right, we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here on the uh, the stock tank where we have another contestant here, <laughs> Adam from Finance 411. He's going to be kicking it off talking about Hims, Hims and Hers Health Inc. Okay, this is a, a pretty interesting company growing like gangbusters numbers. It's incredible. Um, but we're going to be going over all those types of things. Whenever there's a hyper growth style of company like this, there's a lot of questions to see if that, that sort of growth is just sustainable and also if they're making profits. So, um, Adam, why, uh, why are you buying this company? Um, the reason why I started buying the company is I actually use the products. These are the products right here. And gotcha. I use them successfully for uh, hair regrowth. I'm actually using it for a third time to grow back my hair now, and it's starting to work. So I used the product before I was an investor. I grew my hair back twice already using it, and okay. um, I stand by the product. I think it's amazing. I don't think it's bullshit. I can tell you 100% without being paid for it that it works, and that yeah. made me look into the company. Your wife um, is happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> she's the reason. <laughs> she's the reason I started losing hair. No, I just meant because their their top product is a. Uh... Uh, oh, ED. the ED? <laughs> we can mute um, Tanner whenever we need to. Yeah. <laughs> I got I to gotta take over for a minute. If a mitt's not here, I got to make a couple. It's like three minutes in. That's how they actually started with uh, ED. And then they introduced hair loss. They also have um, acne. Uh, and for women, they have several products as well. They actually just introduced a brand new product. And they're introducing one towards the end of the year. Um which I'll talk about in a moment. So the yeah. reason I looked into them is just because the products were great. Then I looked at the stock and I'm like, bro, we're, we would be happy if Palantir is growing 30%. Meanwhile, this, and I'm not comparing it to Palantir, right? I'm just saying sure. like, that's the number. And all of a sudden I'm seeing this thing is growing 94% quarter over quarter, 97% for the year. And I'm like, dude, that's absolutely absurd, right? Like, can we just be honest about that? That's a sick number. And right. after that, they're growing again, 90, then they're growing 88%, then they're growing 83%. And I'm like, wow, the growth is just crazy. And that's why I started investing on it. And I started investing at like the $3.50 mark. I started talking about it and I noticed no YouTubers are talking about it. Let mm. me rephrase, very, very small community. There are a shout out to them, but it's extremely small community. And I'm like, hmm, this company has zero hype, zero hype, no love. It's killing it with earnings. And the more I researched it, the more I liked the earnings um, and, and the financials about it, which I could get into. But that's the gist of it, how I got into the company, because I stand by the product that I actually use. So, okay, let's let's just start with this. When did you start buying it? Like what time? I'm guessing in 2022 sometime. And then like relative to your portfolio, like how big is this as a position for you? Like, is it top three, top five? I'm not like up. Where do we baseline? So, so I started buying it at like around a year and a half ago, I would say. I grew it from, I, I, I started at like sevens. I started really going heavy at $3.50, which was like a 52-week low. I just started going crazy. And I ran it all the way up to 12 and change. Now, the community might hate me, but the technicals that I was going over, and I was talking to Jesse about it, by the way. And sure. I and, and the technicals just didn't justify the, the, the price, the downtrend. And right before earnings, I'm like, I know they're going to kill earnings. They even have a tweet about it, and they're not going to be rewarded about it, even though they destroyed earnings this time and last time. So I ended up selling out of a lot of my position, and now I'm re, re, rebuilding my position. And for anybody that hates on that, I don't give a flying fizzle. It's personal finance, and I don't care if you guys like it or not, but I, I did what I did. And I shared that play with a few people that made a shit ton of money. Uh, right. I, I won't talk relative percentage of my portfolio, but I will tell you that it is a decent size five figure uh, value, uh, more than 10K, like a decent size five figure, whatever that means. So anybody, you guys can keep that. Um, yeah, and I'm just buying into it like crazy. I'm doing a bunch of options plays and I'm holding the stock itself. Uh, if anybody wants a really cool option, January. 2025, $22 strike, and also January 2025, $20 strike, and the $15 was on sale today, 
and it got bought up like crazy. So when you're buying options for everybody, the options does the options price does not directly reflect the price of the stock, and it depends on the demand for that actual option. So sometimes you'll have a really good uh, discount in buying options. In any case, sure. And yeah, I'm building up my position. So um, I, I want to jump into some more technical things. If you have any uh, graphics and stuff, that would be great because I'd love to see some some charts on him's as well. Um, but the first thing, because I don't I don't cover healthcare companies a lot. Whenever it comes to the uh, sections that they're in, whether that's erectile dysfunction, hair loss, uh, all, all the other s sectors that they're trying to get in that they're showing off on their earnings results, um, how large is this total addressable market? Because obviously they're growing crazy right now, but that's could also be due to how tiny the company is. This is quite a small company, market cap one point five billion. Um, is this does does this get to a twenty billion dollar market cap in your eyes? Like where where do we go from here? I mean, there's a lot of room to grow. Uh, the total addressable market it all depends on the way you want to look at it. I'm not looking at it too much because it depends on what products they're going to bring in. Um, it's it's going to be really funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Share a chart. Do, we, do you want me to send it to you? I sent it to you on uh, on X, or do you want me to share it? Yeah, you, you can share it if you like. Just uh, just with the present button below. One second. So I actually compare the company a lot to. I compare the company a lot to uh, SoFi actually. And not a direct comparison, but the same thing that the more customers that they build out, the more they can cross sell products and the more products they introduce, the larger their total addressable market is going to get. For example, if SoFi is going to start introducing uh, business banking or custodial accounts, right. they expand their total addressable market, which is one reason why I don't bank with them. They didn't offer that to me. I wanted right. them. They didn't offer it. So the more... Uh, medication platforms or medications that they offer, the larger the total address market is going to get. I'm going to share it in one second. For example, they just started introducing cardiovascular, and by the end of the year, they're going to introduce weight loss, which is mm. just expands it. So the more they get into, that market just keeps expanding. That's why I'm not looking at it so much, and there's so much that they can get into, right? Right, okay. I would argue, though, that, I mean, the counterpoint to that is obviously like, I understand it's an imperfect analogy, but so for example, for SoFi, like there's a lot of complimentary um, services, but for this, like, I don't know how much they can cross sell. Like it, it's almost like a, a stretch, like as much of, of a stretch as it is from one product to two, it's even more like exponential of a stretch to three to four to five, just because you're, you're going to have like a super, super like niche market that has, like hair loss plus ED plus anxiety depression yeah, yeah. Their products. Yeah, yeah. So like just just because you can't get it up doesn't mean you're also fading <laughs> in your hairline. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so that's a that that's an interesting thing. And and another thing that they're doing similar to SoFi, and again I'm not comparing them, is they're starting to use data with artificial intelligence to sell mm -hmm. the products. For example, they just realized that 30% of their ED users are risk have risks of cardiovascular based on the data that they have. So they're going to mm. sell them the cardiovascular uh, pills that are stacked in the ED, which means you don't need to take a double pill. All you need is one pill and it already does both. To answer your uh, uh, critique on that, I think that, that that's pretty cool, which is, yeah, it shows me that they keep innovating. So, so uh, then a, a large part of their calls then in their earnings calls and everything, they do talk about cross sell often. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. Cool. And and like uh, I thought for for a healthcare drug, um, I find it I, I found it weird that they have an app and stuff like this. Like people are that closely tied in with this uh, with this company. And I wonder if, um, yeah, I wonder if they have statistics or anything like that on on app usage or or how they're actually cross selling. If they have numbers for that, um, could be quite interesting. So I presented the. Uh screen okay Vadim, yeah this is a, a a direct to consumer uh pharmaceutical company that sells uh erectile dysfunction medication hair loss i think they have some uh skincare stuff 
they're, they're, they're trying to get into a bunch of stuff. But oh. honestly, mainly, if, if I'm correct, and maybe Adam can correct me, the large, large bulk of their, their sales is from erectile dysfunction medication. So I read a statistic that it's 50%. This is what they're offering right now. Okay. Um, and Tevis, you were muted and then, there. But, and this is for women. Go ahead, Tevis. No, I was just going to say, I think historically how they've been branding themselves is like at the intersection of all of the tough conversations that people are like nervous, that, like the more taboo topics that people are nervous to have. Um, and that they're like a company that covers all of those. Like, and, and you can look at the, that through their lineup. I mean, the skincare, I think, was, uh, you know, the relatively newer stuff, the weight loss, relatively newer stuff, but like the ED wow. and hair loss um, is definitely their bread well, and butter. I'll, I'll make it very simple. They basically make the taboo and they make it sexy. They make sure that you look fly because you make sure you have hair. They make sure you got uh, clean skin so you could pick up chicks in the club. And they make sure your dick works after that, straight up. Okay. So this is this is something that all guys worry about. And they have the equivalent for women too. That's for I, sure. You guys might not want to admit it, but that's a fact. Nobody wants their shit not to work. Nobody wants to lose their hair. How many people are balding? It sucks. I'll tell you guys truthfully, especially when you're in front of the camera. Yeah, no. And I, 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 I was going through their website earlier whenever I was looking in the company and they are not shy. Like their, their pills are like, no, no, this – this is what will make you harder. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, they, they don't skirt yeah. around the issue at all. It's not like a traditional medication. I think they're kind of like, yeah, no, imperfections Bro, are a thing. We're here to solve it. Check this out. They have a 90% reoccurring revenue. This is the mm. stickiness rate. So they yeah. have a 90% plus. And 90% plus is actually 95% plus, but let's call it 90% plus. Very similar again to SoFi. Their marketing except if they're paying for like paid sponsorship with like celebrities or something like that, they make their money back in less than a year. So if they put in a dollar, they make a dollar back. This is their growth this quarter, 83%. Yeah. And their subscriber growth is 74%. Now check this out, just for you guys to see a really cool chart. And by the way, you might recognize this guy, Yemi Okope. Guess where he worked? <laughs> okay, <that>? brain tree. <laughs> right? So okay, so tell um, tell me about management. Who who founded this company, and uh, and and why is he such a revolutionary uh, individual? This guy right here, Andrew Dudham, he's a little bit um, uh, he, he's an interesting fella. His political okay. views and uh, him running the company. A lot of investors actually uh, told him to keep your political views to yourself while you're running the company. Mm. Um, but this is the this is the founder, um. He just wants to provide healthcare at a cheaper than copay insurance uh, product direct to you really, really fast. So you don't have to waste time going to see a doctor. And again, it's cheaper than actually paying your copay. Um, but this is where it gets really, really interesting. Check this out. Look at this. Their subscriber count, 74% year over year growth. But this is not just 74% one time. Just look at this curve. Sorry, is that, in the, straight up. that is not, like in the thousands or like literally 1,300 no. subscribers? 1.3 million. Okay, okay. It says, okay. it says in the thousands right there. It is in the thousands, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 crazy. So, oh, I, I hear what you mean. Yeah, yeah, in the thousands. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you meant is that like uh, 1,300 subscribers. Uh, yeah, so 1.3 million. Before this, they had 1.2, 1 million, 916,000. I mean, they're growing at nearly and over 100,000 per uh, quarter, and this I is their wonder, revenue. So is there is there sales and marketing expense uh, like <laughs> larger than seventy four percent year over year? I guess I'd no, be interested in that as well. It, no, it's actually less. Uh, so sales and marketing equates for approximately uh, fifty percent of their revenue, and they're growing by by far more than that. And we can go over it. I, I have a slide for that if you want. But Has that been increasing about, or decreasing? So yeah. this last quarter, last quarter, it increased. Uh, and because they're introducing also, um, uh, in, in general, their expenses increase because they're introducing those two new lines for cardiovascular weight loss and they're trademarking something called MedMatch. So unlike a lot of companies that say AI, 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 they actually are using AI and they're actually trademarking MedMatch. So they're trying to cross-reference your data based on the information that they have and try to see 
preemptively if you need some type of medication or not to suggest it to you. The reason why I'm giving them credit is because too many companies say AI and do nothing about it. At least they're trademarking MedMatch, which is going to come out towards the end of the year. So I don't know if it's going to be successful or not, but I give them a credit for doing that uh, and actually utilizing the data. So just just really quick, because this uh, investor in innovation, I've seen you talk with him a bunch on Twitter, I'm pretty sure. Uh, is that correct, Adam? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if he wants, because he's going crazy in the chat right now, if you want to also jump on... Um, just DM me on on Twitter, and you can uh, you can come on and and share the case with uh, with Adam. And try to you know I'm, get us to buy. I'm, and I'm close to buying this company. My, some of the things that I, I found that I didn't like, or at least from from what I could read, uh, there was a short report that was put out that um, you know hers growth has not been nearly what they wanted, uh, and that they've been putting a lot of marketing dollars into the hers side of the business to try to get that going, and maybe that hasn't seen the the growth that they've wanted. Well, what do you think about that? All right. Give me a second. Take the screen away. Take the screen away. <laughs> you guys want me to pitch you? I'll pitch you. I'm trying to be a little calm and let people speak. No, get get into it. All Let's right. go. All right. It's like this. Hims is an absolute fucking monster. Their price to sale right now is 2.0 at a 730 share price. A year ago in May at a 52-week low, it was 350 and their price to sales was 2.1. So today you're getting it cheaper than it was at a 52-week low. They're growing at an 83% year over year. The last quarter was 88%. Total year 2022, 94%. Right. Teladoc grew 10% year over year. Teladoc is a 1.6 price to sales. Just to give you a comparison, although they're not a direct comparison because they're doing different businesses. This thing is growing subscriber count by over 70%, and it's consistent. 70% is actually low. At one point, you can't hold those numbers, so it has to start decreasing. They met positive EBITDA one year ahead of schedule. One year ahead Mm. of schedule, positive EBITDA. They are now negative three cents earning per share. They're coming close to being profitable, which they should get next year. This is the craziest shit. They were projecting that they were gonna be growing at 70%. They end up growing over 80%. Right. Okay. Now, every single quarter, they send back the fuck out of their numbers. For example, the last quarter, they were saying that they're going to get in this quarter uh, like 20 million less. And not only do they increase it every single quarter, they knock it out of the park the next quarter with already the increased expectations. Out of the not last eight earnings or seven earnings, except for one, they absolutely destroyed it. And and the last one, they just met expectations. For example, they raised expectations by 20 million. They beat on the top end and the low end. So they beat everything. And meanwhile, this stock is down. How is that even possible? Showing no signs of slowing growth. But the stock stock did rise after hours, right? It was a massive, like, I'm pretty sure I saw it was like up 15% after hours. And then it came... Uh, the days following just like completely yeah. under where they were even before earnings. What happened there? It hit 18%. Then uh, Moody's came out and they did the downgrade. Okay. Remember Moody's came out with the downgrade? Yeah. And then there's there's a couple of, uh, there's a large short interest. So there's some people that are complaining, uh, not complaining, they're putting out short reports. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't find it. A good look at the end of the day, all the numbers that I gave you are just absolutely it, it, it's sick numbers. It's sick yeah. numbers. Like you can't even every well, single quarter they raise guidance and the next quarter they smash the raise guidance. Forget about the lower ones, mm-hmm. you know? So, okay. So, um, I find with a lot of hyper growth companies, there can be hidden metrics. By the way, Tom Nash is here to support you, Adam. He said specifically, um, Tom, what's up, my man? Yo, thank you so much. Spasibo, bro. Spasibo, bro. So, uh, what is the stock-based compensation like? Because that's, I find, the hidden metric in all hyper-growth stocks that gets... Uh... I'm going to get you the chart in just a moment. Okay. Uh, but it's basically it's basically going down and steady for like the last year and a half. I'll show it to you in just a moment. It's beautiful. There's no hidden metrics. This is just gorgeous. 
Uh, and if you go back on the screen, just to show the screen, there goes your answer about how many people actually use online with the app. You were asking that? Yep. The, yep. Dark, the royal purple is in-store purchases, and the bottom figures are all online. So as okay. you can see, they remain very lean. Right, but is that like... Um... Because obviously, uh, like, I don't mind on or, or like online purchases. I just thought it was weird that like a pharmaceutical company had like an app for a specific drug. And maybe that's more common. Like, I'm, I like I honestly don't have a lot of experience with the uh, healthcare industry. So maybe that's more common than it is. Um, but yeah, I, I just heard small, th small critiques in this business where people thought that like, uh, um, yeah, I, I will, Tom, I will. That, that was really, really exciting. Uh that being said, sorry, I don't know if uh, if you have any details on this, but a large percentage of their actual overall earnings had to do with um, just selling Viagra, like like uh, uh, other companies' drugs. Is that essentially like is that is there a problem there or no? So they were selling their own version of Viagra, and actually, they just first of all, this is stock based compensation. Oh, okay. I mean, it's beautiful. You can't, like, it's super steady, plus or okay. minus a few. What happened between Q1 and Q2 2021? Like, how did it drop? That's that probably month? IPO. Yeah, oh. they actually were. Bro, you're going to laugh, and I'm going to keep saying this. They're so similar to SoFi. They were also a SPAC, and they're one of the few SPACs like SoFi that's not only surviving, but thriving. Right, right, I right. Know. I know. I'm going to keep doing it because you guys understand SoFi, but the more I looked into it, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of similarities over here in terms of, the vision and what they're doing and, and how they're growing. But stock-based compensation is absolutely beautiful. over here. So um, maybe we can jump back to that last chart. Adam, do you have any uh, visit or has management highlighted in the call, like what their vision is for the wholesale uh, department? Because right. that whole side of their business is just flat, you know? Um, so I'm just curious as to like, they have this secondary revenue source and it's not growing and it's just probably the, the thing that has most costs for them. So I'm just curious, it's like, how is management thinking about that? I wonder if they even they're are not, at all. Yeah, they're not concentrating on that because the, the only markets that they are in, in right now is United States and the UK. They have so much more penetration across the world to, 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 to go after. And for me, they're in in store products is essentially like brick and mortar mm -hmm. yeah yeah and okay, but so so one of the ahead. things that i have that i struggle with the most with companies that are growing like this as well because the growth is slowing it's not like accelerated growth it is uh, slowing we're still in the 80 percent, so there's a long way to go before it ever gets scary um but it is it is hard to value that and then i also think of like do we have any numbers on the amount of people in the united states or or wherever they're in that, uh, and by the way, are they in other markets other than the States? Yeah, they're in the UK market and they're going to expand to other markets, but mostly US okay. and UK as well. Okay. So, um, who has, you know, uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, problems as a percentage of the population for US, UK, um, you know, how big does this get? What, what percentage of the market is owned by other companies? I'm sure they're growing as a percentage of market share. How sustainable is that going forward? Um, I guess that's a bunch of questions that I'm having. But then I guess uh, it's, it's expanding into other uh, other areas as well. Yeah. Again, they're gonna keep of uh, dick insurance. Okay. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, but I'm being a myth for a second. There's yeah, you there's are. gonna <laughs> there's gonna be consistently new medications that they can offer. But I'll give you an example how they're innovating. So they introduced something called hard mints. So instead of just giving mm -hmm. you generic Viagra, they came out with hard mints. So if you want a date and you're hanging out, you pull out a mint. Nobody knows what you're taking. That's one. Two, the packaging that they send you, it's a sexy package too. I know you guys don't think about that, but it makes you feel good ordering something that most people are afraid to talk about, you know? Yeah, so the problem though is like even, even things that are not, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you call it? They're, they're sort of taboo to talk about. You can't walk around with your hard mints pack and pull it out as if it's a normal mints thing. Like people are going to know that's the heart. Like eventually there's going to be other people that know exactly what you're using. How, bro? It looks just like, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, well, uh, it's going to be other. There's no way that you get from that, bro, that it's, are you kidding me? 
Yeah, There's but it's, no other, it's way. other. There will be other hard mints users. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people will recognize the package. So you're not. So who cares? You're not trying to hide it from other people that are using ED, and you're not trying to hide it at all. You're just trying to look sexy about it. Tanner's asking how big. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just trying to. You're just trying to look, look sexy about it. You're trying to make yourself yeah, yeah. feel good. That's it. That's the whole point of it. Hims gives you a product. They give you a great product that works cheaper than it would cost to uh th than copay, and they make you feel good about it. That's it. And that's sure. how they keep and they keep innovating. Look, they didn't need to come out with that mint. That just shows you that they're trying to come up with new ideas, repackage things, make things a little bit better for you to use. That is yeah, cool that, that, yeah, that's a good package. I mean, it's right? I, I saw you struggling to find it. It's all over the uh, investor relations page. My uh my my Google ads are gonna be fun right after uh, I do research on this one. Right. <laughs> um. That Look, being said, the okay. There was also because obviously it's a, a, a D to C company. Um, I'm sure this has to do with a lot of their cost cutting efforts or or what they're talking about with scale. But whenever you start getting into really high quantities of shipping products, what are they doing to keep the cost down on shipping? And then also, I read something about them actually, and, and I'm I'm going to uh, potentially butcher this, so please save me here. Uh, but buying their own pharmacies or getting their own sort of uh, uh, you know, labs to actually make products faster and cheaper. Uh, help, help me with that. So they work with several different pharmacists and they work with 600 doctors, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, for the doctors to keep their doctors, they pay them going market rate in their area. And as per CEO and as per the company, they're saying that the doctors love working with them because everybody wants to work from home. Why would you go to your... Uh, office when you can work from home. By the way, there's a, a, a sheet that I'm, I'm I'm sharing right here if you guys want to take a look at it. Uh, I know Tanner is going to be all over this. I know he likes things like this. Got a zoom uh, in on this one. Yeah, you're going to need it. So My bad. More? All right, what are we looking at here? Just their financials? Uh, this is their no. This is actually a spreadsheet that one of the Hims community actually gave, and Tanner was asking a lot of questions. So about the profiting, they actually mm -hmm. growing their gross profits. Their gross margins is actually growing quarter after quarter over quarter. They did eighty one percent this quarter and seventy seven percent last quarter. Uh, seventy seven eighty percent last quarter. They guide for seventy five. They end up beating the seventy five. Um. So they, it's actually they, growing in some. So wait, metrics. they were at eighty. They guided for seventy-five and came out at eighty-one. Yeah, that is ridiculous sandbagging. And and they um and they reinvest the the margins into the company to give you a better experience, better user interface experience as a customer to make it as simple as possible um, to go through it. But yeah, these are the numbers right here. Think you about that sandbag for a second. I know that's a 6% difference, but it means it. what it means from the quarter before is they're saying, no, there's going to be a large drop off in the percentage of, of gross profit that we saw quarter over quarter. And then not only did that stay flat or they beat it as in, in we, it fell less than we expected. No, it actually grew. So you, you beat it by like a factor of so many other, like not only was it not as low as you thought, not only did it uh, stay the same, it it actually came in even higher. That's a that's a insane beat. Um, yeah. So even if you look at their uh, investor relations, I'm sorry, I got to keep going back and forth. So if you're gonna look at their investor that. relations, I think this is a good comment. Um, like this stigma, I think, is just a, a number one value prop for their entire product line and for their entire yep. business value proposition in general. Right. Right. So, from, from what I'm seeing, though, the CAC this cost is their on this business wheel. is so big. The what? The customer acquisition costs, like, like the customer acquisition costs, are like five hundred dollars per person. Yeah, but if they have a stickiness rate, you end up getting that money back. Sure. Especially, look, I spent sixty five dollars on hair products alone. Um, I'm gonna be spending that forever. Right. Because right. I don't want to lose my hair when I stopped using the products. Amongst other things, I started losing my hair again. I don't want that to happen. So I'm not going anywhere. So the average customer is giving them $53 uh, a month, their average customer, 
which is increasing. Yeah, um, and 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 like I said, it's, it's not something that uh, can be a killer of a company if they if they're already telling you there's going to be a year to get it back. But they are saying already, and what I'm reading here um, is that their cat costs have actually been increasing uh, year over year. So I don't know if it's harder for them to find their next client or like like that's yeah I don't know that that can always be a problem especially with these companies that are growing like crazy is like you're you might just like fill your market and then you know what's the next product and um are you actually like are those products working for you I don't know do we also Adam do we also have any numbers on like the lifetime value of the cohorts like let's say a cohort that they signed up in 2017 sure. or 2018 are they still like what percentage of that cohort is still subscribe because i think that would be indicative as well of like the payback periods with regards to their cac they do have 90 so percent retention on on revenue it's just what what does that look like from a client that subscribed back in 2017 or something who knows so this is one of the things that we were talking in the hymns community we don't actually have that number and that's one of the things that we're kind of upset about that they're not giving us the specific numbers uh, so take it for what it is are, are have they made any large acquisitions i'm seeing uh like small acquisition related costs in their in their numbers. Is there anything that they've ever come out and said, you know what, we've bought in this drug company or something like this? Travis, what are you looking at? Some funny it's comments? Funny. Ignore me, ignore me. I, I, I can't. I, I took the comments off. Uh not that I know of, Tanner. Not that okay. I know of. Okay. But this is the EBITDA right here, by the way, which they end up getting one year earlier than expected. Got you. And so what and are they saying about the rate. what are they saying about the margins for next year? Uh, they're saying that it's going to be 75% uh, percent plus again. No, I mean the adjusted EBITDA margin. Sorry. Oh, uh, one second. They're saying four to 5% for full year 23. Okay. So I just want to say that this number right here, full year 2023 was 830 million uh, uh, um, last quarter. And then the quarter before that, they had this number at like, think 800 million so that's what i was talking about that they keep increasing can we, their can we stay on this page really quick 2023 underlying themes 85 percent long-term retention so right that's two years plus if you just hover over that adam does, does it say any information because that's what uh one of the no, comments right here online revenue retention from subscriptions with a tenure of at least two years yeah payback period defined as the time it takes quarterly uh, cumulative online gross profit generated by hims and hers. So this is for two years. If you're using hims for two years, you have uh, this is the retention rate. Okay. Now I want to I want to read the comments. Now this guy got me why why is the year over year growth for next quarter like are they just sandbagging like crazy? Because didn't we just do like eighty three percent and now they're saying fifty percent? Yeah. Um, like I said, they were estimating that these last two quarters were also going to be in the 50s, but they ended up coming in at 88 and 83, respectively. Oh, and, and what does that look like quarter over quarter? What did we do for revenue this quarter? Um, this quarter, we did $208 million. Last quarter, 191 And they're expecting 212 to 220 217 to 222 Uh Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why it's selling off is guidance. Yeah, but that's not that's not what's going to happen. Just letting you know. Well, that's true too. Just I like mean, if you have a, a record of just dominating but expectations, then if if you pull this up on TradingView, I I I just I'm having a hard time pulling up the screens. Um, you'll see that they keep destroying earnings. So yeah, maybe some people don't know this and they don't expect it. That's fine. I rather keep buying at a cheaper price, and we're just going to keep killing expectations. But their expectations for 2024 is 1.2 billion. Uh, that's for that's like their long term goals, but they're that that means that they're only going to grow 40 percent, and they haven't raised that for the last like three quarters. And people ask, why aren't you raising that? And they're like, that's our floor. That's what they keep saying. And they're like, don't worry, that's just the floor. In other words, we're guaranteeing 1.2 billion. Sure, sure. Can I pivot us away from numbers for just a sec? Yeah. Um, because I just have sort of one question that I'm trying to figure out, Adam. I, I understand the value proposition. I understand like the stigma associated with like, you know, the whole mission statement of the company and and what they're trying to solve. But this is a gigantic total addressable market. What makes, like what contributes to their moat? Is it just the better user experience? Like what is the non-replicable thing that makes them special? 
I think a little bit. It's social media. It's the cool factor, unfortunately. But that's just sexy marketing. Yeah. But so it's a first to market advantage that they came up with the system of offering not just like one product, but a, a larger solution of taboo products. But like they don't even have that. They have 1.3 million members, man. There's like it's like Snapchat in 2014 introducing like stories. You can't argue first to mover advantage, right? Because like a big dog will like so what I'm saying is like what is stopping one of the biggest healthcare companies in the US of just offering a ton of money to their director of marketing, their VP of marketing, and then all of a sudden they have a sexy brand campaign and then they do the bundling similar to hymns and they roll out a subscription. Like what, what I'm saying is what, what's stopping people from just copying them, like the bigger players? So why haven't the bigger players came in yet? But to answer your question, I'll, I'll, I'll give you why I believe that they're going to win and you guys could agree with it or not. They have first mover advantage. They're growing at a huge pace. They're going to use the data from the growth of their customers to cross-sell more products, and they're going to keep introducing newer products on the market, for example, the cardiovascular and the weight loss. And they're going to keep doing that rinse and repeat. At the same time, they're going to make you feel really good about yourself. And once you're using their products, you have no reason to leave because if their products are working for you and they're making it super easy for you and they make you feel good about it, they're literally shaking your hand as they're selling your products you're not going to be leaving. Nobody's going to acquire you specifically if you're already using hymns. Yeah, they are. They have that sexy factor. They are if they do have, let's just say a competitor does that have that sexy factor and they just offer, I don't know, 10 bucks cheaper a month. You know, I mean, this is literally, so this company, uh, Spruce Point Capital Management put out a short report on this company a while back. uh, And that was like one of their top three points is that they said, we believe Hims faces enormous competition while having developed no sustainable advantage beyond its brand, which we believe has been sustained by outrageously large uh, marketing expenditures. Which, like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of companies that probably have that exact same problem as well. You probably look at, like, a cash app, for example, that, like, a large percentage of people that are on there are, you know, on there because of the brand. But then again, uh, I'll even counter myself by saying that you're on there because your other friends are on there. You know what I mean? Like hymns is not like, oh, all the friends get together and we all have uh, hard mints, you know? Or maybe you do. I don't know. But that's not, uh, <laughs> I don't know anything like that. <laughs> I mean, sure, you have you have a lot of options where you can go to. You you sure. know, you can, you can go to SoFi, you can go to Ally Bank, you can go to Lenders Club. But at the end of the day, SoFi gives you a better package. They give you better products. They give you better pricing and they make you feel good about banking with them. And they're going to right, keep introducing right. new products. It's a similar situation. Again, I'm not comparing them, but at the end of the day, what makes SoFi so special? Why can't somebody go to Ally Bank? Because SoFi offers more products. They make you feel good about using their products. Their customer service is kick-ass. They're super sexy. Their CEO is in your face. And you feel good about using SoFi. And they give you the, you know, that, that experience. At the end okay. of the day, like, so, that's what it is. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that uh, that CEO really quick. Has he put the company in hot water? Like, has has the stock dropped the way Tesla did whenever Elon Musk took out that joint on Joe Rogan? Like, he was how much? Founder, right? Could you drop this uh, thing for a second? Yeah, sorry. Do you have anything like? Because you said he he speaks politically. Like, what what does that mean? I prefer not to get into it, but. Um, he hasn't done anything that put the company into hot water. Okay. Just uh, he has some views. And at one point, a couple of times, he had to like uh, put his Twitter on private, for example, to the point that so people don't see his tweets. He's very outspoken. Mm. Uh, I find that he came down a little bit. I don't know if this was pressure from the shareholders, uh, but people were complaining that the price is going down because he's doing a lot of talking. I don't think it's to that extent, but he's very outspoken to a certain group of individuals uh, what his political views, and that's fine. Just keep it to yourself. And he's not an Elon Musk. Nobody is. He's the only one that can get away with speaking his mind, Elon Musk. So it didn't really hurt the company. Um, he should do more earnings calls. He was on the last earnings call. People were complaining that he doesn't go on earnings calls. Very similar mm. to others, but it yeah. feels like he's working on it. At the same time, I can't really complain about him as the CEO because he's the one that brought the company to where it is right now. And he's a founder. So I can't really say nothing. I'm just giving you guys the good with the bad from what I could tell. 
Yeah, I mean that that's small. I find people that complain about that. It's like it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> I, I remember there... say one. Sorry, go ahead. Go... No, I want to say, look, there's already competitors that offer or hair loss products that offer Viagra's that offer online uh, telemedicine. The the thing that that's cool about Hims is they offer telehealth communication, telehealth medicine, but the telehealth is the actual means to an end. The end is actually pushing their own products. And that's how it works out. And I think they're the only ones that master that so far. And then they put a ribbon on top to make it cool and things like that. But mastering that telehealth product, telehealth product is what helps out. So has there been any like um, large partnerships or anything that has completely changed the business or that they're looking at getting like, I don't know if they're on uh, Amazon or something. Like, has there been any sort of like um, large things that might change the business going forward? Like, for example, like SoFi getting a bank charter. What's what's the next big growth curve for uh, for for Hims, or is it just new I product guess, rollouts? I guess the yeah, the weight loss and the the cardio stuff. Maybe we could talk about that. Yeah, the cardio the cardiovascular is really big, especially because they're stacking the medicine into one pill. Now I know it's not going to sound like a big deal. But the path of least resistance, where you can stack two medicines in one pill, um, they also do it with their hair loss. That They have a lot of competitors, but they don't do that. For example, there's two active ingredients in hair loss, uh, minoxidil and the phenanestrol or some, some shit like that. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Most people have both sprays or both products, but they combine both into one spray. I know it sounds stupid. You're like, you're like yo, that's not a big deal. But stacking things like that is is what gives them these little innovations. You could only be so innovative in this type of market, which is right. one of the criticisms that you guys are saying, and I hear you, and that's how they counter it, exactly like the hard mints and things like that. They're going to keep introducing answers like that. Also, they stay under the radar because they don't want to introduce like uh, narcotics-type drugs. That's how they're staying under the radar from the DEA. And uh, the DEA was coming out with a law that says that you have to see a physical doctor. You can't do telehealth if you want to prescribe like narcotics type drugs, you know, like uh, you guys know painkillers. Yeah, but they, they do like want to get into things like pain med uh, pain management and stuff like that. Doesn't that kind of get into the narcotics? Uh, as far as far as I understand, and the CEO came out and literally answered that DEA thing because, of course, there was a short report. Hims is going to, you know, die. And they're like, listen, I'm specifically staying away from this stuff because I don't want to be I don't want to be under the DEA. Sure. I want to. Sure. I want to do clean medicine. That we're not going to have crazy lawsuits. We're not going to have any static. We just want to move forward. So, the growth. They factor do have a couple. Is, I, I'm not going to go get ahead. too on your case, but there are a couple things here that they say they want to get into that definitely would be, in my opinion, uh, you start putting yourself under the 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 thumb, like pain management, substance abuse, testosterone. Um, I don't know. Though, like. There, there, there becomes a lot more oversight whenever you start getting into you, drugs for substance abuse. Where are you seeing that? Share the screen. Uh, yeah, it's on there. Here, I'll, I'll share my screen. So this also does show. I've just, I just found this. Uh, it does show actually uh, estimates where they're, where they're talking about population here, just on the, uh, on the right here. Let me actually. Mm -hmm. So just products that they're in right now, ones that they want to get into, like the uh, heart health one for cardio. Uh, what I wish they would do, what I would love, and maybe this would bring a lot more uh, conviction for people, is show similarly to SoFi, you're not just showing growth in member numbers, you're showing growth per product, right? And so we don't know how well birth control is doing, which is a massive, massive opportunity, but how well is the HERS product for birth control? Um, so as I was just going down, sorry, it's uh, so mental health, they have... Uh, substance abuse here uh, is uh, future products that they want to get into pain management, weight. Um, but, but all of these testosterone, for example, if they have not all testosterone, not all pain management, not everything that you just mentioned is certain schedules of drugs that would be sure. under the DEA's purview. So I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a medical doctor. I just know that the CEO came out specifically when there was a report from the DEA and he says, we're specifically staying away from anything that's legally questionable that we can get like in trouble with. Right. right? Or, right. or well, I would also we don't imagine, want any of that. I'd also imagine there's also like an extra set of hoops they need to jump through for them not to even be OTC. Right. Like if they want to still be over the counter, 
um, you can't prescribe a lot of like hard stuff that you need subscriptions for or right, yeah. doctor's notes for. Um, yeah. On the on the point, Adam, of the, the stacking, I thought that was really interesting. And I think that is something that has a potential to be a competitive advantage in itself. Um, I guess a couple of questions around that. Is this something that's just like patented to him? Is this this uh, method of, of stacking, or is it something that is uh, copyable by others? Um, have we seen anybody else do this uh, in the in the space? And also within him uh, themselves, like how are they determining the stacking? Are they just saying, okay, we have the biggest like grouping of cardio and ED, let's say, or or PED, whatever? Right that's what we're going to stack. And then we're going to offer that as a secondary product line, or is it more on a custom like tailored basis? Okay. So that's a great question. Thank you. So the stacking, it's not exclusive to hims. You could stack ED came from basically they were trying to get your cardiovascular, like uh, your blood pressure down. And that's where erectile dysfunction drugs came from. Uh, but Hims would be the most public that does that, if that makes sense. Like the, on a big scale company that does that, from my understanding, it has been done before. The CEO even mentioned that, but this is where the kicker is. So the CEO says, we know that based on the information we already have, 30% of our ED customers would need cardiovascular. And since one fourth of deaths in the United States, I think it's like 80 million are due to cardiovascular, we can preemptively make sure that that doesn't happen and save lives. He says, the way we're going to make take it a step further is this MedMatch, which they're trademarking, and they're going to use artificial intelligence. Now, I'm not just saying AI just for the hype of AI. I'm saying it because they're saying they're trademarking a platform to be able to use all the data that they already have to better give you a custom medicated fit. So they are trying to tailor for you specifically the medications that you need and be able to stack it and cross-sell with other medications. As they grow, they'll be able to offer you more things. Um, it's going to be very hard for a competitor who's not, let's take, let's take two competitors, a huge company and a starter company. A starter company is not going to be able to compete whatsoever because they don't have the data and they don't have the customers and they're not going to be able to acquire enough customers to have enough data to be able to compete. So anybody coming from small is not going to be able to compete. And then you have the large companies that, yes, possibly large companies are going to have the data. They're going to be able to compete. However, it's not a winner take all. There could be other competitors. Hims has a solid, solid niche right now, and they're going to keep building on their solid niche. So people think that Hims is a pharmaceutical company. They're not. They think mm. that they're a telehealth company. They're not. They're a hybrid somewhere in between, and they have their own branded products. And that's what gives them a competitive advantage, in my opinion, against the small guys and the big guys. Like, I know Amazon has, like, Amazon Pharmaceuticals. Well, that's great, but that's not exactly the same thing. It's a different type of product. It's a different right. type of service. But um, and at a $1.5 billion market cap, bro, they, they can grow to, you know, 20, 30 billion without – ever having to get out of their niche, just offer mm. all those products. Yeah, sure. I, no, yeah. I, I believe that. Um, but just, just last question on the stacking. Like, what is it about the stacking itself that just, even not from a competitive aspect, but just from a utility perspective that more large companies don't do this? Is it technology barriers? Is it data barriers? Or is it just the cost of doing it is too high? Like, um, like even even a large like I don't know you name me a Johnson and Johnson that's not even going to compete with Hims. Why don't they do stacking more? Like why don't I see it more often? Because Johnson and Johnson is not giving you specific medication for you. Johnson and Johnson. Whoever I mean, I, it's just the first name that came to mind. I, I'm just saying that I don't know too many companies that does what Hims does. That's what I'm trying to say. They have first mover advantage. So anything that they do, even though they didn't invent it. It's almost like it's their proprietary technology. Yes, it's been done before. However, not on a large scale. So yes, yeah, somebody can prescribe to ED medication and cardiovascular medication, especially if you ask a doctor. He'll say, oh yeah, there's a version. We'll just cross, cross do it. Give it to your pharmacist. He's going to give you one pill instead of two pills. I don't know anybody else that's instead of you coming up and saying, hey, doctor, can you please do this for me? That's somebody mm -hmm. saying, hey, Tevis, 
you know, I don't want to use Tevis. God forbid, patient X, listen, we we see some some questionable activity from the medications that you're taking between your dermatology, your ED, and your hair loss. Since you're 25 years old, you shouldn't have this. Because of this, we think that you should see one of our doctors for cardiovascular. And based on the data that we have, we already think it's blah, blah, blah. Come see the doctor. And then the doctor is going to say, look, I realize that you're, you know, you have a probability of some cardiovascular disease. We can help you with this. Why don't we stack it for you so you don't have to take any additional medication to make it the, the path of least resistance? That's how I can explain it. Hims. Well, nobody else is doing that because nobody, nobody gives a fuck. You know, Johnson and Johnson, all these competitors, pharmaceuticals, Amazon. It's all about what you're asking them, but nobody's saying, "Hey, we think there's a bigger problem here, and we can help you with the solution," specifically to the customers that they have. So, um, I I have a couple more questions just about the product because I saw that um, they have some sort of fulfillment uh, capability. Seventy plus percent. Uh, of their things are done through their uh, affiliated facilities. And then this Arizona compounding unlocked proprietary products for their uh, compounding pharmacy. I just wonder like, what, what does that lead to? Like, um, I don't know if you guys are even knowing what I'm talking about. Let me share my screen. But I, I have a hard time understanding this uh, compounding pharmacy thing and what that means for, for the value of this company going forward. Like how much of a save on their, on their costs, uh, does it mean for them to have new, um, I don't know. It, it, like to me, that sounds like a lab, but I'm not even sure. Um, yeah. I wouldn't I, even be able to answer that. I'll be honest with you. They don't talk anything about that on, on saving costs or whatever on the earnings calls of like, uh, you know what they're doing. I um, didn't catch that. Okay. Uh, if they did, I didn't. I don't. I don't recall them talking about that. I know that they have a large network. I know that they treat the people that they work with well. From my understanding, that's why they're paying them. You know, there goes to who they're working with. And this then, is their flywheel, by the way. So then, uh, then lastly, okay, let's just talk about the actual stock then, because um, they've got a they've got a brand. People love it. Everything like this. There's an eleven percent short on this company. Um, that being said, 63% owned by uh, by institutions. So actually like much larger than SoFi, like almost double. Um, insiders are held by 13%. I'd love to know if you have any information on insider selling or buying. Um, yeah, big, actually, things like that. And then their cash in, yeah. cash in debt, uh, like, like their balance sheet. I'd love to know more about that. Um. Can't hear you. Sorry, there was actually somebody that posted, and I forgot which channel member. Oh my god, uh, there was somebody that actually posted how much the insiders are holding, and I believe that they have a sell at a certain price for their options. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I know somebody posted it earlier today or yesterday that I saw. Um, so I can't really tell you that right now. Okay, to be honest, I know oh. the CEO holds a shit ton. The Oak Tree was the one that led their IP, their uh, their SPAC. Was that the, the yeah. Howard Marks? That's pretty cool. Um, no, this this could be really big. Like I think, like in, in terms of um, subscribers, if they can, I just wish they were bringing down their CAC costs. I, I, whenever you're raising CAC costs like that, and also you're gaining subscribers, I find they're uh, needing to target stronger and stronger to find those very specific clients that they're looking for that actually want their products. Um, especially if you're opening up for a larger breadth of products, um, that, that your CAC costs essentially should go down. Like if someone can find you and then they have offered, you know, six products instead of one, it should open it up a little bit more. That being said, um, it can be normal, but like, do they get to 10 million plus subscribers? Like, is, is there a market for, you know, that that style of uh yeah, I'm laughing wait one I second this i, I just want to i think this is the schmuck so someone in the chat said cat costs increased due to uh, entering new product categories i believe i would say don't, you're wrong don't don't make me open the chat please <laughs> uh, hold on. no i just there's there's one thing in here saying uh, customer acquisition costs increased due to 
um, entering into new products. That, that should not be the case. It should honestly be the other way around. Because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing is that one, there's usually whenever entering a new market, a very, if, if you're entering it with a great product, right? If, if Hims hair loss or their, their next products, like their uh, cardio things are a very good product, hopefully in some sort of regard, they're a better product than their competitors that they're entering, that they sh there should be a large amount of uh, very hot leads, okay? People that are really excited, heard that the product's coming, getting ready to sign up the second it launches, so far, you'll see that whenever they launch business accounts, for example, people know it's coming, people are ready, people want that product. Um, and so like, there will be existing clients that can go and cross sell over or even other ones, like for example, maybe someone says, oh, you know, I use them for this, they've got this product coming out, that's now a hot, or like at least a warm lead, right? Um, people should now know the brand a little bit more. Cat, cat costs, whenever expand, expanding into multiple products should go down. Look. Um all I know is the company is growing at a crazy rate. They're acquiring new customers at a crazy rate. Their retention is at a crazy rate. They reached EBITDA, uh, positive EBITDA um, a year early. And everything is going up on the company. Yeah, maybe some of the numbers are slightly less than absolutely fucking amazing. That's cool. But for the most part, it's all great to absolutely astronomical. Do Look, they have that? There's that doesn't mean anything, though. Like... Like you, you can find a company that's growing at 400% year over year. That doesn't mean anything if the valuation is also pricing it at growing at 400%. So, okay, hold on. Cause I'm curious about valuation as well. Before we go into like valuation and, and targets and all that, do they have debt and what's their cash position? Uh, I believe their cash position, cash, cash position is 65 million. And I don't think that they have any debt. That doesn't sound like a lot at all. Uh, well, I'm I'm just reading on Yahoo, so this is it's a lot of the times inaccurate. But it's saying 191 million in cash, five million in debt. Possible. But I I just wanted to make sure that that is correct because like that five is million in debt. What? Five, just five million? Yeah, like like oh, a debt-free no, company. No debt. No debt. 170 million. Cash 170 million. No debt. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good place to be. Okay. So I. So, um, I, go ahead. have they ever put out like, uh, offerings selling, uh, selling, um, stock for, to try to get, to try to raise capital for future expansion, anything like that? Any, they, no, they don't need it. What's the point of it? They don't need to, they don't need to dilute their shares in any case. They haven't, they have enough cash. They don't have debt. They're expanding as needed. They're so, not rushing any products. So Adam, you bought, you bought this initially. Um, you know, in the sevens, you bought it again heavily at three. You sold it. I, I believe I heard you correctly when you sold some at 12. You're a buyer now. Like, walk me through, like, what's your thought process with regards to this position? Is this like a, you know, buy and hold for the long term? Is it more like a 12 month, 24 month, you know? And then what are also like, are you looking at any targets specifically? Were you saying, okay, it's not worth it above this price or below this price? I mean, I got to see where the numbers are going to go. But in yeah. general, I always had a number of fifteen dollars, even when it was running up to twelve, twelve and change. Uh, I said that when it runs up to fifteen, I would reevaluate it. Um, I based it on comparing it price to sales and the growth rate compared to a lot of other companies, including Teladoc and a couple of other ones. By the way, the person in the crowd that loves Teladoc, Teladoc, go fuck yourself. Uh, that's yeah. all I wanted to say. Um, I think that's the same troll that keeps trying to bother me on Twitter. It's so funny. I hope you enjoy your ten percent growth. Whack ass company. Um, well, <laughs> anyways, um, so fifteen dollars would be the price that I would start uh, analyzing it. The only problem that I don't like about Hims, and it's for me, it really sucks, is you can't do covered calls. Uh, there's no weekly covered calls, so I, I love covered calls for SoFi, for Palantir, and my other stocks, which gives me essentially a, a dividend on my play. I don't, I don't have that with Hims, which really sucks because. If, if I'm getting that synthetic dividend, I don't really care if the price goes up or down. I'm still getting my weekly salary. So that really sucks for me. Um, I got a couple of calls for the end of, uh, for January 2025. Let's see what happens in 24. Also, HIMSS is a good, 
a good bet against the market. I know it's going to sound crazy, but in 2022, when everything was going down, Hims was the only thing going up, one of the few companies. So, and if you look at the market, when the market does good, Hims goes down. When the market starts going down, Hims goes up. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Probably just a coincidence. But it's also like that 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 makes me feel good when I buy into him. So yeah, fifteen dollars is my price target. Not that I'm gonna sell out of it, but when I'm gonna reevaluate it and based on their growth and, and things like that. But that should be right around when they're gonna get gap profitable, which is gonna be next year. And you know um, we love gap profitable companies. No, I think I think that's uh it it honestly I, I want to be really hard on this company because I think every investment needs like you need to be really hard on your investments to make sure that what you have is is true. Um, Hims is growing subscribers like crazy, and and the amount of multi month subscribers and the low amount of churn is like it's unbelievable. Okay, their 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 multi month subscribers is crazy. So um, honestly, I'm very happy with it. I'm not a shareholder, but this is one that I've I've been looking at more and more. Uh, whenever I'm not looking at fintech, which is rarely, um, it's just a matter of like how big the actual total addressable market is. And, and the comments that you've said about the CEO does scare me. Uh, a really hot CEO like that has to be extremely good to offset the crazy crap that could come out of their mouth. You know what I mean? And and a lot of the times you want a CEO that kind of just sits down and does their job. But um, anyway. I'll leave it off there. I also wanted to add that uh, um, Hims. it's not just Adam that likes this company. Wall Street kind of likes this company as well, putting an average price target on this company of $12.80. Even looking at um, some more freelanced, uh, what do you call it, freelanced analysts as well, like on Seeking Alpha, they're especially strong on this company as well. It seems like the community overall is very positive on Hims. And institutional buyers, although being 10% short, you have still 50% of them that are that are long, much, much higher than even companies that I like, like SoFi, for example. So, so like, why? Okay, so I know this is like a semi-rhetorical question because like we get asked this question for SoFi or, or um, you know, all growth companies all the time. But like, if, if institutions are bullish, if retail is bullish, if the company's eight consecutive quarters of over 80%, if they have no debt, if they have ample amount of cash, if like if everything seems great, like why is it at a two price to sales? Like what what am I missing? Is is well is it macro? No, listen, and it not, could be and like not a single analyst has it under ten dollars. So it's not just me. It's not just the community, bro. Like Tanner just said, Wall Street is saying it. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, and and I'm not even sure that like I don't know this category well, but like just to price it out as price to sales, I think is. Like healthcare could be low on price of sales. I'm not even sure. Like, um, well, if you wanna, again, I just want to compare it to to Teladoc because that's like the the face of telemedicine, right? Online health. That's like the face, as far as I I, I would say. Are, are they considered par uh, comparables? Because I thought they're di like different businesses. One's like oh, meeting online on Zoom. Yeah, they don't have products, do they? No, so they're they're both telehealth. That's why the guy in your in your audience that keeps screaming. Teladoc, bro, he's mad stupid. It's not a comparable company. But if you want to take telehealth, telemedicine, which is like the, the, the greater scope of both these companies, Teladoc is growing. It's, I did it with all the companies, by the way. Teladoc is growing 10% and their price to sales 1.6. They are growing over 80%. Their price to sales is 2. Now I compare them to a couple of other comparable companies as well, not just Teladoc. I have a video about that. And they were the cheapest out of all companies to buy in terms of that. So what I think you have over here is a great opportunity to buy into a company that has a mega growth story. Now, a lot of people are going to say, but they can't sustain this, but in the future, it's going to go down. But, 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 but the reality is today they are sustaining it. Today, they're still growing at a crazy level. Today, they're increasing their margins. Today, they're increasing all of their clients. What happens tomorrow, we can't guarantee. So we could only make our investments based on today and assumptions of what will happen. Anything can happen tomorrow. You can say that about any company. Palantir, SoFi, Amazon. Bro, right? NVIDIA was supposed to die. Everybody everybody was going uh, Everybody was going to work from home. Nobody was going to buy computers. But NVIDIA didn't die. The stock price went up like crazy. So you can say anything about any company you want, right? Uh, uh, Meta was dead. It was dead, right? Nobody uses Facebook anymore. Well... 
Meta is a huge company again, right? So you could say anything about the future and everybody has opinions and that's fine. But my opinion is based on everything that I see, this company has a lot of growth in the future. And the way I see it is I'm not even looking for a 10X. If the company has more growth tomorrow than it does today, it's a good investment for me. And Hims, at the very least for me is a double up because it was already at 1250 and the numbers just got so much better. So why not 15? That's all. Yeah, no. Thank you so much, Adam, for coming on. Really do appreciate it. Unless Tevis has anything else to say. Um, I really do appreciate it, man. This has been a, a really fun episode. Hims is definitely a hyper growth stock and one to keep an eye on. Um, hopefully, you know, they, they break into profitability and become exactly what everyone wants to see because nothing would make me happier than this stock running up to $20 and making everyone a fortune. So, Can I say um, one thing? Sorry? Can I say one thing before we go? <laughs> sure. I feel like it's going to be a, a terrible thing to someone in the comments, but go ahead. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to make an apology to Honest Chill. He's pushing Teladoc. I apologize that I've been mean to Teladoc, and he was saying that Teladoc has a moat, and Hims doesn't. So listen, I agree with you. Teladoc has a moat. The only moat that they have is the moat that they're drowning in with 10% growth. Whack-ass company. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Uh, uh, Chalk Talk did say that average order value uh, went from 69 to 95 in three years. It should be mentioned. Um, but I'm also seeing like their revenue per user is kind of just staying like kind of stagnant, if not dropping a little bit. Um, I don't know. Not sure. Average orders? Average orders is uh, 53. Well, so I think that's revenue per user. I think average or uh, yeah. I don't know about the average order volume uh, if he's right on that. I'm sure that's more of a, but he said it went from 69 to 95 in three years. That's great. Yeah, but anyway, that's I all. Go up more. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, but this has been Tevis and Thank Tanner you, talking about uh, the stock talk and. Uh, or sorry, stock tank. Jeez, come on, man. Having the uh, the hymns expert himself, Adam from Finance Four One One. Um, can I add a little bit, little, little, little something, little something? Adam said he went to what was it, Walgreens, and said someone, yes, someone across the counter said, "Are you listening to Tanner from Future Investing right now?" Bro, can I say the story, please? Go ahead. I've made it. I've made Bro, it. I'm retiring. I <laughs> First of all, I was so happy for you. I kid you not. So I'm listening to your interview, speaking to Tom Nash. And I had it on speaker. Yeah, yeah. I was getting a uh, baby water for my daughter. And I didn't have my pods on. So I'm listening to it on speaker. And Absolute psychopath, by the way. Who does that? Who walks through the Walgreens with a speaker listening to a podcast? I mean, I... <laughs> that, that confidence from hymns, man, just gives yeah. you a fuck smile. Bro, my hair, my hair is growing back. So you know what I mean? Uh <laughs> So I don't want to miss the podcast, right? I got things to do all day long, but I I really like your channel, Tanner. So so I've been a fan without subscribing for a while, and I kept seeing you, da da da. And then when I seen you talking and Tevis talking with Amit, I was like, oh wow, these guys have a cool channel, right? Yeah. And so 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 I try to catch your your lives, and you have re I really like your channel, straight up. So I want to make sure Thanks, I don't buddy. miss it because you're talking to Tom, yeah, for sure, and you're pitching Tom and SoFi. So I'm like. He's going to go with his A game, right? So I was like, let me listen to this. And Tom is a funny dude. I like listening to him too. And he's going to give criticism. I thought he was going to give me so much pushback. I was like, I was getting ready to go to war. And he went, yeah, no, you're right. And I was like, I was caught off. I had all these notes. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, listen, He, if you write, you write. You know, if it makes sense in his MVP app, then it makes sense. And it made sense. The numbers were there even in a bear case scenario. But I was listening to it. I was walking up and they needed to open up the locks because in New York, everything's closed. Even like uh, kids, kids water and stuff. It's absolutely insane because everybody robs everybody in New York. It's a shithole. So the guy is coming. He opens it up with the key and I'm walking with him from the back to the front. And then he goes by and he's listening to me, listening to you the whole time. And he goes like, yo, is that that future invest dude? I was like, Tanner? He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, he's interviewing Tom Nash. And he's like, isn't that the Palantir Tesla guy? I'm like, yeah. He's like, let me see the screen. And he's like, let me see the screen. I was like, all right, here, look at the screen. 
And he's like, yeah, that's the guy. I follow him on Instagram, I think he said, right? Are you bigger on Instagram? You have Instagram? No, I, I don't have Instagram, no. Maybe Tom does. I don't. Um, And he's like, yeah, I know the guy. I was talking – He and he's like – I was like, oh, that's pretty freaking crazy. And yeah. um, that's it. And he was talking about what stocks he buys and things like that, but it was really cool. Got to love it. I, what did you say? Fans in different area codes. I like that. All right. That, that, that was my extension. Last time, Tevis extended an extra five. I'll do it. Amit is not saying that that person who was working at the Walgreens was Amit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, great presentation. Really enjoyed it. We'll be back next week with an upper, another episode. And that's it. See ya. Bye. Take care.